Hi, I'm Jenny Fish from One Big Happy Yarn Company. Welcome back to our Christmas stockings knit along. Now that we're finished with the cuff, we can start on the rest of our stocking. I'm gonna show you some jogless stripes. We're gonna work the heel and the toe. Remember, you can order your kit that has the pattern plus all the yarn you'll need at OneBigHappy.com. So I know in the first episode, there was a lot of information on how to work this cuff but the rest of the stocking is gonna go by really smooth. So join me as we finish up our Christmas stocking. Now we have finished off our cuff. I wanna show you what mine looks like. This is where I'm at. Now from here, you can go ahead and continue knitting in stockinette, which is knitting every stitch all the way around for six inches, or I can show you how to make stripes. And we're making jogless stripes. So for those of you who may or may not know what jogless stripes are, it is how they stack up. So when you're knitting in the round, you're knitting actually in a spiral. So when you change colors, they stack up on top of each other. And sometimes you get this little unevenness on the end and that's called a jog. I'm gonna show you a simple, easy technique to minimize that jog and perform jogless stripes. So let me grab my other little sample here where I've knit a few stripes. This one over here. So there's, this is just a little sample, and then here's the side, this is where they meet up. So it's pretty smooth, I mean, we have just a little bit here, but that's where my tail is, so when I weave that in, that'll line back up. But, we're doing four ro uh, rounds, there I go again, we're doing four rounds of each color. I've ended with a white round here, so I'm gonna start with the red round. I am not cutting my yarn, I'm leaving it attached and pulling it up. And so now I'm ready to start the red round. First round, you just knit. You knit every stitch. The magic comes in on the second and the third round. Okay, so I'm coming up on the end of this first round here. Just a couple more stitches. Now, getting, there we go. Okay, so to start the second round, get the white yarn out of the way there. The trick here is you simply slip this first stitch. You don't knit into that first stitch, and then you knit into the second stitch and knit all the way around. What this does is it causes an elongated stitch and it takes up the space of basically like one and a half regular stitches so it cinches up where that drop is and I'll show you when I get back around okay so I'm coming up to the end of this round and I am getting ready to start round three so round one, knit like normal. Round two, you slip the first stitch, knit all the rest. Now I'm on round three. And this is the important part. At this point, you wanna take your contrasting color and your main color and twist them. Just so that you have a little twist right there. And now you knit the next two rounds. So then you'll knit rounds three and round four. But by twisting this, it closes up the gap and it allows you to continue with your, um, with your color. So continue doing that between your red and white until you're at six inches. Once you're at six inches, you want to make sure that you have, and I'm gonna stop right here just to show you what, it, what it's gonna look like. When you're at six inches, we're gonna be putting in our afterthought heel. And you want two rounds of one of the colors. Let me show you on the finished stocking exactly what I'm talking about. See where the heel is split between this one strip of color. I like that design, that's how I did it. Now you can opt to do something different and move that around, but this is where I wanted to put the heel. So I'm ready to set up for my afterthought heel. On this piece right here, I've got, on this sample piece, I've got two rounds of the color. So I'm gonna continue knitting this side here. Now for the afterthought heel, we have a couple of options. Um, we can use dental floss and put in a lifeline. Uh, 
on this yarn, it's so um, smooth that when I made these stockings over here, I did not use a lifeline. But if this is your first time, you might want to go ahead and use a lifeline. And that's simply taking your dental floss, threading it through a needle, and threading it through all of the stitches on your knitting needle to secure those stitches. And let's see here, I'm almost there. And then I'll show you what we do at that point. Okay. Okay, so now I'm on the back side of the stocking and this is where I'm putting my afterthought heel. I can take the time and run some dental floss through here to save these stitches. Uh, but like I said, the yarn is great. I didn't have any problems pulling out the stitches. So I'm just going to um, prepare for my afterthought heel. And what that is, is we're putting um, extra stitches in using scrap yarn to as a placeholder for where we're going to come back later and put the heel in. So let me grab some scrap yarn here. Let's see. There we go. And it's very helpful at this point, too, if you have double-pointed needles because what you're gonna do is knit across all of these stitches on this back needle. So this is just 30 stitches. You're not gonna do the whole 60, just half of them. So I just picked it up and I'm gonna knit all the way across. Okay, so I've knit across all of those stitches using my scrap yarn. And now, the side of my needles out here, I'm gonna leave that there. And I'm gonna come back, because here's my working yarn. My red is my working yarn. I'm gonna bring this needle around. And now I'm gonna knit across all of these um, stitches that I, that I made using the scrap yarn. Now, if you didn't have a double pointed needle, you could have used your other needle, knit across, and then slid all those stitches back over to the working needle and knit them again. Um, but it's just easier if you have a double pointed needle or another set of needles to knit that one on. Um, you would either need a circular needle or a double pointed needle. You don't wanna use a straight needle because then you wouldn't be able to slide those stitches the way that they need to be moved over. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead. I'll show you what this looks like here. And this we are creating here is a um, placeholder for where we're going to come back later after we finish the stocking and put in the heel. Okay, there we are. So now we have have three rows of the red, one of the gray that's our scrap yarn. I don't need that anymore for right now. You see, that's a placeholder right there. And at this point, if you are using a lifeline, you'll want to go ahead and run that dental floss through there and secure those stitches as well. And then you just continue on in your stripe pattern or if you're doing regular stockinette, just continue on for another five inches. Once you get <clears throat> another five inches on, then you're ready to set up for the toe. So I am, let's see, where am I? I'm at the beginning of a round. I'm gonna knit a couple more rounds and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we finish up the toe and work the decreases. Okay, so on my sample, I've gone ahead and just knit a couple of rounds. Um, you'll go ahead and knit um, five more inches and then we're ready to decrease for the toe. So to decrease for the toe, it's pretty simple. Um, your first round, you will knit one and then knit two together. And that's where you take these two stitches and you knit them together like that. Then you knit to the last three stitches. Okay, so now I've got three stitches left here and I'm going to decrease these using the SSK, which is slip, slip, knit. So I slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, and then I'm gonna slide them back and then knit those two together through the back loop, just like that. And then knit that last one. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side of our work. I'll show you how to do that again. Knit 
knit one, knit two together, and then knit until you have the last three stitches. Okay, so I'm almost to the last three stitches here. Let me show you that SSK again. Slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit. Now when you're sliding these back, your back needle or your, your working needle is in the back automatically. So you don't have to take that needle out and put it back in. You can go ahead and knit through the back loop straight from here, just like that. Okay, now the next round is just a simple knit round. You'll do that and you'll alternate between a, what we call a resting round. That's where you just knit all the way around and then a decrease round and you'll repeat those decreases I just showed you. Follow the pattern and then when you're ready to close up the toe, I'll show you how to do the Kitchener stitch. Okay, I've gone ahead and worked my decreases up so I can show you how we close up the toe. We use a grafting stitch called the Kitchener stitch. So first thing I wanna do is, um, Cut off some extra yarn here. You can cut that one off too. And we're gonna grab our tapestry needle. And we're gonna do a setup stitch here. Okay, so I've got stitches on both needles. My yarn is coming from the back stitch. I like to do this, start it out with this little step that I'm gonna show you here um, when I'm doing the side of a toe. Um, I go through, so I'm gonna use some terminology and be repeating myself. When I go through here, it's as if to purl. So I'm sliding from uh, the right to the left underneath that stitch. And I'm gonna slide that off and then I'm gonna slide my needle, my tapestry needle into the next stitch as if I'm gonna knit. So now I'm going from left to right. And I'm gonna leave that stitch on the needle. And then tug up my yarn here. Now I'm going to the back needle and I'm going to slip as if to purl. So that's from right to left and slide that off the needle. And then on this one, I'm going from left to right. And you guys, this is really hard for me because I get my left and my right mixed up all the time. So Reminding you on right and left, if I say it wrong in advance, I'm apologizing. Watch what my hands are doing and not what my words are saying. Now my needle, my yarn is coming from the back. So I just did that. I'm gonna go up here, slip as if to knit and off. Slide as if to purl and on. Then the back stitch, slide as if to purl and off. So you'll continue this repetition back and forth. And the uh, again, the pattern, uh, the process is in the pattern. <laughs> okay. Um, on your tension, when I'm pulling my yarn, I wanna match the tension of the stitches that are in my work. Um, so I'm trying to do that as I go along. But don't worry, if you get off, uh, your tension is a little too loose, you can always go back and tighten that up at the end using the tip of your tapestry needle. But it's easier if you try to get it as matches, to get it as closed as possible at this point to save you steps later. Okay, here we go. There should be 20 stitches that I started out with here, so I'm almost halfway done. We'll go ahead and finish this up, and then when I'm done, I'll show you how we go in and go back to our afterthought heel to add in the heel. Okay, so this is what it looks like after you've closed up the top of the toe. Now imagine that there's five inches between here and here, because this is just my little sample. But this is the what it looks like with your heel. You'll have this line of mismatched scrap yarn in here. Now we're gonna address the afterthought heel. And it's called the afterthought heel because you knit what you're knitting and then you come back and put in the heel. So um, if you've used the lifeline, you'll also have some dental floss through here. I chose not to, um, but I'm gonna show you where we go from here. We are going to pick out this gray yarn right here and find our live stitches and put them on our knee, on, um, I'm using double pointed needles this time. So I'm gonna put them on the double pointed needles. I just find that easier. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this through here. And this is another one of those times where you just really wanna slow down and take your time. 
it makes it well worth it in the end. Okay, so I'm gonna go through that stitch there. And I'm gonna grab a third one. Okay, so I've secured the first stitch on the bottom of it and the first stitch on the top of it. And I'm gonna hold those and just start picking out the scrap yarn. And you can see here, pull that up. Come back here, pick up that stitch. It's hard to hold all this and <laughs> you can kind of tug on it sometimes and see where that next stitch is. Bring it around. The good thing is, is we're using size seven needles and a sport weight yarn, so it's a lot bigger. Um, the same process can be used for socks, but this yarn and needles is way bigger than you work with with socks. So if you've ever thought about the afterthought heel in a pair of socks, it might be easier to try it on the stocking first so you get the groove of how it goes and then transfer that knowledge over to a sock where it's a little smaller. Also, too, we have a video out there for our afterthought sock afterthought heel sock. So we'll put that link up there too. So if you want to try that sock, um, it uses the same method here. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and finish all the way through here. Once I get all of these stitches picked up and on my needles, then I go ahead and continue um, just like I did with the toe. You'll do one round of decreases, one round of a resting round, and then you Kitchener stitch the, the end of it to graft it closed and you have finished the heel. Once all of that's done, then we're gonna go ahead and make a I-cord tab to hang our little stocking. Let me show you what that looks like. So now we're gonna move on and make this little tab right here. This is cord, uh, an I-cord that we basically just attached to the top of the stocking. This gives us something to hang it with and what I did, let me show you how I did that. Let me grab. Okay. Let me show you this real quick and easy. Decide to, I like the middle part right here. I'm going to go ahead and on the edge where I had that purl bump, I'm going to pick up three stitches. So I just slid my knitting needle through there. I'll do that again for you. Just slide it through that stitch. Grab some yarn, slide it through the next one. I did three stitches for my I-corn. There and here. So I've got those stitches there. Now let me show you how to make an I-corn. Super simple. You, let's get that tail out of the way there. Okay, I'm gonna knit the three stitches across here. Oh. So if that ever happens, see how loose that got? I can just tug on that tail back there and that'll cinch that stitch back up. Okay, knit three. This is where the double pointed needles come in handy. I'm gonna slide that over and then knit three again. Knit three. Slide over. And you do this for as long as you like, for however long you need your um, 
little tab that you're gonna hang your stocking from. If you don't wanna do this, you can always get some ribbon and put that through there, tie a little knot in it to hang um, on your mantle. We're just gonna simply bind these three stitches off by knitting two, slipping the first one up and over, knitting that last one, slipping it up and over, and cut this. Ooh, don't cut your stocking. Okay, cut this, slide this tail through the loop. And then with your tapestry needle, you can go ahead and secure that right there like that. And you have a little tab. You can make it longer, whatever you prefer, but that's how you do that. And then uh, weave in all of your ends. And for blocking with these, because we do have the fair aisle up here, I found just a simple steam block worked great. And then we had that all nice and pretty. Lay that down there and there's your Christmas stocking. Remember, you can get a kit with the yarn and pattern at OneBigHappy.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below and click the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. Happy knitting!